in trying to find your purpose, yes, how can mysticism help that? Well, mysticism is really the key if you are not clear about your purpose, because we are each uh, born with a purpose. The soul is here to become actualized, to to have a full experience of this reality and to have all of its light here and a full embodiment. But then the next level of that soul purpose is perhaps your path is to be an actress. Perhaps your purpose is to be a painter or a writer or you or a business person or, or not a mom or it, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is you feel within, wow, this brings me joy. It's not joyful every day. We all have challenges, but I know I'm on my purpose. And so the reason mysticism is the key, if you don't know if you're on your purpose, is by drilling down into this, these journeys I talk about, going deep within ourselves, touching our soul, touching these, these, uh, these cathedrals of light, which are consciousness, which are wisdom, which are truth and understanding, we receive messages. And the messages are life altering. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. And when that happens, I've just seen people just, wow. Welcome back to Better Together. Uh, our <laughs> quote of the day, you must first be who you really are, then do what you need to do in order to do Balls. I screwed that up, people. Here's the quote. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure you're alive <laughs> and awake. <laughs> quote of the day, you must first be who you really are, then do what you need to do in order to have what you want. And that is from Margaret Young. As we said, welcome back. Today, we have an amazing guest. She was on an early episode of Conversations with Maria Menounos and my Sirius XM show at the time, Deirdre Hayde. She is a modern day mystic, a visionary leader. Uh, we've had her on the show. She was the one who taught me that I'm not crazy, I'm wise, and that you stuff, aka scam are not crazy. You are wise. I thought you were going to be like, and you are actually crazy. <laughs> no, we're all crazy. We know this. And it's true. I certainly am the craziest probably, but, um, but she had taught me that and I've, I've held on to that and I've shared that with people. So we're going to get into this right away. She is a modern mystic, uh, as we discussed, a modern day mystic, a poet, a visionary leader in the ancient arts of the wisdom traditions. Today, we're talking to her about so many things. Um, we're talking about purpose we're talking about self energy self-love even sports. the relationship sports <laughs> even the relationship between mysticism and quantum physics um it was a really really cool conversation and i hope you guys enjoy it so here we go so deirdre we've had you on the show before a year yes. ago, almost exactly. Yes. And so it was time to bring you back. Mm -hmm. And I want to first start off for the listener's benefit. Um, I want them to understand what a mystic is. So you're a mystic. Yes. And we've talked mm -hmm. about this, but for anybody who didn't catch that early episode mm -hmm. of, of the older version of this podcast, I want them to understand what that is. And then I want us to get into that conversation we were having before the air. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me back. I love your show. What you're doing is really bringing consciousness and spirituality into the world through your your beautiful, I want to say, neshama, that means soul. Thank you. Know, the you. light of who you are. So thank you. And, um, and so a mystic is a person who has an ability to travel through interdimensional space into another states of consciousness, such as heaven or uh, consciousness such as uh, the psychic world, you know. But, but a true mystic is, is clairvoyant. However, the clairvoyance goes beyond just a psychic ability. It goes into having relationships with 
a non-beings that you would call the angels, you would call spirit guides or the prophets, uh, wise, wise sages that want to give us their knowledge so we can have a better life. And so a mystic really has a duty to share that experience with others, to be a voice for the divine world. And it um, it took me a lifetime to understand and know who I was and what is this gift I have. Mm-hmm. And through my study, I said, oh, that's it. That's what a mystic does. But it's not a word that's used very much today. It's more of a word that is archaic or ancient. We think mm-hmm. of ancient mystics. But I said, well, why not have a mystic today? We're, we're the same people, right? So that's... Um, in a nutshell, that's a mystic. That's who I am. So cool. It still gets me so shocked every time you say it. I wonder, the one part I don't remember before is if you're able to travel interdimensionally and that includes heaven, yes. what does that look like for you? Well, it's very awesome. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> but I can't imagine at the same time. It's very, very awesome. It's like a um, a, a, a Star Trek movie and, you know, going uh, warp speed, go through that into these worlds of uh, cathedrals, of um, archways, of uh, columns of light, of... A great beings, the most beautiful, beautiful beings you could imagine with hair and we and clothing and it's it's truly extraordinary. And you no, know, Maria, one of one of the things I love doing is taking people on these journeys with me, and that's what I do when I do a retreat or a workshop. Everyone comes in. We uh, we have music. We I always play crystal bowls, and I have incense to just get our mind to settle down from the outside world and then that's what the radiance journey is is i actually open the gates so you can go on a journey and people go on these journeys and they just go wow so that that's my greatest joy that's what I love. So you're a whole other kind of along. guide. Yeah, I'm a whole, exactly. <laughs> like yes. we have tour guides in Rome. Yes. And you're going to guide us to heaven. So That's it. <laughs> so when you guide people on this heavenly tour, yes. are they seeing the same things you're seeing? Many times they are. And what I tell people is, if you start to have your own journey that is not completely what I'm seeing... Go with it because it's your soul. It's your neshama taking you. We've opened the gates for you now to travel to heaven. And guess what? You have to. You get to stay here. You don't have to have that near death experience. You can so stay crazy. your body, and you can go there. And I have had hundreds and hundreds of people who have come up and said, "I've waited for this my whole life. I I cannot believe what just happened." Yeah. And I say, "Thank you." to the creator because it's not me. I am, I'm a doorway. You're another doorway. archway. It's so Arch. crazy because just as you say it, I get mm-hmm. emotional. Like my yeah. nose tingles just thinking about people getting to do that. Thank you. And that's what a beautiful soul you have because your soul through your life experience, everything you've been through, you have come so close to touching heaven. But we need you here. So... It's not time for you to go to heaven. (laughs) But your soul, the soul, you see the soul, Maria, has a longing for heaven, a longing to go home. We all, the soul knows this, I'm in exile in this world. This world is not comfortable for me. I don't understand it. I don't know how it works. The ego gets it, but I don't, me and the ego, we're just like on two ends of a street. So the soul is asking for these experiences and that's why I believe I was given this gift to answer the call of you and who is asking for this experience I'm here to say come I want your soul to have this experience of heaven so we can do it amazing I wonder how do you know that what you're seeing isn't something you're making up in your head. For example, um, when I'm on a table and I'm getting energy work done and I just start floating into crazy times and spaces and I, I see different things and 
I'm like, okay, am I making this stuff up in my head? Or where is this coming from? And so for somebody who's never even done that, it's a big leap for them to believe that they can go on a journey to heaven right now. Correct. So how, just thinking from the skeptic's point of view, how do they know what they're seeing isn't something they're making up? Excellent question. And I'm really delighted to answer. So so, uh, to quote Marion Woodman, who is one of the great Jungian psychologists and leader in in feminine consciousness, metaphor is the language of the soul. And this is why the great spiritual texts and the poets, they, 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 they speak of their experiences in metaphor. And you have to have a key to unlock the metaphor to know the meaning. So when you are on the table or anyone, say, getting acupuncture or a massage and your mind yeah. just starts to drift. It happens when I have acupuncture, that, too. Yes, exactly. So when your mind softens and the ego gets to go, go by, sit, sit somewhere else, because you're finally tending to the temple of the body, and the body, by the way, is divine. Let's be clear about this. The body is divine. And when you're taking care of your divine self, because you're taking care of your body, the metaphor of the mind, of the consciousness of your soul begins to come up. And it will come up kind of heckly peckly, like it doesn't make sense, like this image may come or that image may come. Now, when I'm doing a healing session, let's say I was working with you, I would say, okay, tell me what you see. And then I would start to ask questions of your soul. What do you feel with this image? What what does it bring back to you? How do you feel in your body now? And we start to go on a journey to release whatever kind of trauma, pain, or toxin is in the body so that it can be healed. Now, when I take a journey, when I let's say I take you on a journey, we also go through that realm because we have to start in the metaphor of your of your mind. But once the gift, what I discovered doing this work, Maria, is once you retether, and Marion Woodman talks about this, to your soul, once you allow traumas that block you from your experience with heaven to be released, it's easy for me to say, now we're going to go into a temple of an amethyst cave where the purple amethyst light will infuse every cell of your body with healing. And you will be able to go there because the blocks have been cleared. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. And when you're on a table with massage or acupuncture, you are going on a journey. Your soul is taking you on a journey, but you may not understand the metaphor. So is it imagination? Yes, because imagination and metaphor work like this. And because we are all pure energy, we are pure thought, our brain, our mind only processes through metaphor and through a a visual or a sensory picture. So your consciousness is, will grab, oh, this when you were this age or that face or it'll just grab things to give you messages the next step of a journey that of what my gift is to take you on is then i take your soul and lovingly say okay great you're open now i'm gonna take you down this corridor and help you find your heaven within that that's why i'm here wow Huh. So what if you see something dark? Like I remember being on a table. First of all, the the uh, one time I was on a table during acupuncture and I think it was the Virgin Mary that came to me and I saw like all this beautiful bright light. I was going into like this other place. Maybe it was heaven. I don't know. It was amazing. Um, but when I was getting energy work done, I kept seeing like a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> what if you see a dragon? Does well, that mean something great, bad? No, that doesn't mean anything bad. And many times when we go on journeys into our inner consciousness, 
a pain or trauma will be seen as a, a negativity or oh. a demon. Or, and I really, really want to, to share with you and all your people not to be afraid of that because that is your conscious is trying to tell you this is an area where you have had some trauma or you are constricted. Or, and it's an area where if you go, if you just look at it, it will open and you'll see inside of it an angel of light. There's a piece of you, I call that a, a key of yours, that you've lost or was stolen from you or you gave away by mistake. There's there's keys in our darkness. So we it's, it's okay to face that. It's a message because there's a key in there for you to become an empowered human being. Mm-hmm. So do you also do like psychic readings for people? Well, I can do psychic readings. I, I don't say I'm psychic because I really work on focusing on people, on your angelic guides and your uh, divinity, your path of divinity or towards divinity or that that's where I operate. But I am very uber clairvoyant. Wow. Yes. It's funny, I was driving this morning and I was thinking, I wonder if there's a way for us to know who our angels are and be able to talk to them directly. Oh, absolutely. How do you find that out? Well, we could do that right now. No way. <laughs> do you really? want to know who your angels are? Of course I want to know. I was asking this morning. I'm like, I wonder who they are and I want to be able to talk to them. What if it's my grandmother? What if it's my cousin? Who knows? What if it's my dog? Could it be your dog? Oh, absolutely. No way. And you know, my my dog, whom I love, was my oh, my champion. He just um, died in the spring unexpectedly. Aww. And oh my gosh. I have to tell you, see, I'm still not over this. Yeah, it's pain. It's so deep, the pain, the loss and the grief. And after he, the night he died, I just have to tell you this little story yeah. it's about the angels. I, and I wrote a whole piece on my blog about, um, you know, dogs being our angels and animals being our angels and, and how to know that within mm-hmm. them. So after my yelled passed away I was so exhausted and my housekeeper was with me Patricia and she said you should go to sleep you should go to sleep and um, I'll stay with him till the morning when we kind of bury him so I went and laid down and early in the morning I felt a hand on my shoulder like a big hand and I woke up and I said wow who's in the room with me who's got his, their hand on me and then I, I kind of looked up and there was this giant angel with like shoulders like three and a half feet wide and and he had on this dark cape and black hair my dog had black hair and this shining white face and he smiled and I'm going to get really checked up and he put his other hand on me he said just I want you to know how much I love you and that it was an honor to serve you and that we from the realm of the dog kingdom we are here to serve humanity and we are here to love you and help your world be better and I want you to know it was an honor to be your angel and I'm always your angel and I'll never leave but I wanted you to see who I really was because he was huge (laughs) and was this a big dog or a little dog? a little dog wow he was a little dog wow That's what I said. I went, wow. I mean, I, who have these extraordinary things happen, for me, this was extraordinary. Yeah. And I really felt it in the depth of my being, how the the animals are really our angels, and especially dogs, if you have a connection to dogs or to cats or, or pets, that they are so much greater than we think yeah and I really really got that so now he said I'm always with you I'm one of your guardian angels and I'm your protector so you I will always be with you wow wow I I say it all the time I I think that they're sent to us from God for different reasons and I understand that even more now because you know, I had my first crop of babies that all just passed in the last yeah. few years. And now we have the new three little ones mm-hmm. or two big, one big and mm-hmm. two little. Um, but 
each one was spent sent for a specific reason. Right. And, Absolutely. And I know that I know Maximus was sent to me mm-hmm. for sure, without question. Um, he was sent to protect me and make me feel safe and yes. always my everything. And also he was sent to heal you. He's yeah. He was sent to bring you light yeah. for your body to yeah. stay healthy. I, I also see that. Totally. You. Totally. Oh my God. He makes me laugh. Yeah. He makes mm. me so happy all day day (laughs) long like literally brings me so much joy um so yeah okay so how do we find out okay so it's i'm just gonna look so this is when i do a reading okay do i you know look at your soul and see who open the gates open the doors see who we see there with all of the beautiful signs here in your studio better together (laughs) i love it um and what I see is, uh, first and foremost, you are um, you have a light coming in through your crown chakra that is a a, a, a beautiful pink and um, like a sky blue turquoise kind of blue color gemstone, and this is the light of the archangel um, Ariel, and uh, the archangel Ariel is the archangel who who is the keeper of balance and beauty. So beauty is balance and harmony. And she is your oversoul. So she is the archangel that is the oversoul. She travels with you from when your soul was created forever. And she is your, also is your oversoul. She is the, the guiding light which you are here to merge with into this this very high f- stellar frequency. So from her, if you see her there, she's right above you, always, always shining down within you. You also have a realm of angels. And oh, by the way, she asks for you to talk to her whenever you want. Just call her. Um, Ariel. Okay. Archangel does this have Ariel? anything to do with that I look like the Little Mermaid no. now with my red hair? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny when, he, when I just said that, I went, oh my God, this sounds like the Little Mermaid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because people will joke and they're like, you look like the Little Mermaid now. And I've said many times that I feel more me with this red hair I love than it. I have with anything else. Because it matches your soul, your nishama. And it... Obviously, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They love to to play with us like that and show us little tie-ins. You know, the angels, they all have great, great sense of humor. So that is Ariel, and she said, please talk to her. Okay. Please talk to her regularly. Yeah, and Ariel, I need more balance. Yeah, how do so I know How do I know when the right balance is here? There you go. That's, <laughs> that's perfect. actually the thing. I don't know if... I, yeah, that's the part in my life where I'm at now is I don't know what the real balance is for me, right? How do I temper Mm -hmm. or not temper Mm -hmm. goals and dreams at the expense of health, right? Right. So I learned all my health lessons. I'm like, I never want to do that again. But then at the Mm -hmm. same time, I still want to do things and I still Mm -hmm. dream and I still am excited to live. Um, And so that's kind of my big question is balance, ironically. Well, that's obviously why she came forward is the most pronounced angel right now because she really wants to help you with that and teach you how to be a truly empowered uh, person, truly empowered woman, because you are divinely connected with her and with the greater creation. And part of that is understanding balance. And the way I find that for balance is really by going within in my contemplation practice and you know asking for guidance to show me and then really checking in with my gut I found that the the body really doesn't lie Mm -hmm. like my head will talk me into things without it just left right and center yeah but when I go down into my belly how do I feel about this that is a really really good barometer to know how to stay in balance. Yeah. Well, I've been practicing that so much Mm -hmm. lately where even when I'm sitting with somebody for, to interview them for a position or whatever, I'm like, how does my body feel? 
And if I'm anxious or if something doesn't feel right, then I have to listen Yes, because there's a reason. Yes. And when my calm, shoulders are calm and I feel good, then I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So there, just keep going and you can speak to her. Now, I also see with you, you have a large family. You have a large family, uh, a, a great deal of family members that are around you all the time and really love you that are on the other side. And um, they, it's so interesting because they, they're all saying in unison, um, you know, you go, you go. They're, they're just like a cheering squad. They so believe in you. And um, they believe in, in your mission and your dreams. And they want you to know that you you can do it. You have all the support you need to do it. Whatever it is, I don't, I'm telling you, they seem to know what it is. Okay. And they're saying, do it. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So when you do workshops, are these kinds of things that you'll yes. guide people through so they can know who they're their peeps are on the Absolutely. other side? Absolutely. And I work with everyone in the audience, and then I walk around, and... Um, answer questions is so it's like a whole gestalt of of bringing together and integrating the world around us with our inner world and our ability to access the divine um you know men, a lot of meditation is about transcending but i have learned over doing this a lifetime that's over 50 years that's all i'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> is that it's it's not enough to transcend. We're meant to be here. We were sent here for a reason. So it's also about integrating the outer world and our inner world. And the only way we can really do that healthily is by being connected with our divine source. Because at the end of the day, we can talk all we want. And you know this from healing. At the end of the day... It is just a simply miraculous, unexplainable experience that heals us and brings us home. Yeah. We just can't even put words on. I guess I also, I want to go back to the balance thing because, you know, I ask for so many things. I ask for guidance on things. I forgot that I could ask for guidance on that. Yes. And if somebody wants guidance on something else, they can ask for it. You know, I talk about it all the time. You know, ask and you shall receive. But if you if you put it out there, the answers do come. Yes, they do. I don't know why I forgot about that for that well, one. Well, I'll tell you why. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because we, it's like the ego, the, our ego is 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 really a, a slippery little little person there. And sometimes what's right in front of us, you know, the ego is like, ah, I'm just going to kind of cover that up for a while. So it's kind or of like a game. Or we think we're supposed to figure it out. Like, that's where right. I was like, I'm supposed to figure this out. Like, it's cerebral. It's not. Oh, you don't have to figure it out. You know, I I used to think I was supposed to figure it out, too. And I just figured myself into a complete corkscrew mess. That's where that got me. So when I started asking and surrendering and asking and surrendering and then thinking, thinking, watching my thoughts, thinking, then answers just came, answers that I, I would not never have thought of. And that's wisdom. That's mm -hmm. wisdom. And we all have wisdom within us. Sophia. Sophia means wisdom. You have wisdom. And the wisdom's in your soul, your consciousness, is in your, your angels, in the creator. And when we go there, life becomes, well, it rocks. It becomes really magical. How does it... How do you guide people through that process? Because the outside world is so loud yes. and it's it's kind of one dimensional. Yes. And and people's thinking is one dimensional. Yes. Right. Yes. It's all about the now. It's all about how this is going to affect me. Yes. <clears throat> how do you guide people to be able to go within for the answers and not go without? Well, we begin first by creating the safe space so whether it's a personal session or whether it's the room with the workshop or the retreat uh, i create a safe space i always make it very evident that when you come in this room it's quiet it's safe 
the lights are down, we have candles, we do everything to just so your whole being goes, oh yes, that's right. And the other thing is when the magical state in, within us is really our child. And our child is alive every day with us. We just forget about that. And so the child is who gets the most afraid and the most confused with life. So when we, when I create a space and you walk in, I know your child's coming in. And when I do that, your child goes, oh, 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 I really like this. Mm. Oh, right, this is reading time. <coughs> oh, right, this is the, ma the child comes out. Remember that, you know, the line of be, be his children. So then you're already halfway there. And then we talk, tell jokes, we laugh. How are you doing? And I always, I always have to start with a stand-up routine because that's always the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go into watching our breath, and then we just begin the journey. It's 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 a guided, it's it's I don't want to say it's hypnosis, but it's calming and soothing. And it's that place that you know of when you go, like you said, with acupuncture and massage, you just start to relax. Mm -hmm. So, but then we just go deeper. And uh, people have amazing, amazing life altering experiences. Afterwards, we'll talk about it. I may take someone a little farther. Um, I'm really about the group, the collective, that we're all healing together. One of the beautiful things about coming together in a group, the reason I love to do retreats, is because we create what's called a orhamet. And orhamet in Hebrew means the um, overlying light. So as humans, we have an ability to actually create angels. We have an ability to create a human light. And the, the human light the uh, Orhamet is an angelic presence, and that presence of that group lives forever here on the planet. And you be, you can begin to feel that presence, and that's I, that's really fun. Wow, I want to go to a retreat. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> let's do, we'll do I, let's do it. I don't I have would. one. I don't have one planned right now, but um, but I think it's time. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, let's see here. Purpose. I think this is a good topic to get into. So purpose is something we're all searching for. Um, I wonder what is kind of the relationship between mysticism and physics? Mm -hmm. And then how is that related to purpose? Excellent. Well, I brought uh, my husband's book, my husband Will Art. Arndt's made a movie called What the Bleed Do You Know? Mm -hmm. So I brought his book. And um, that is all about physics and spirituality. We also... Which is why you're the perfect combo. <laughs> right. And we also, last year, had a whole series we did um, that's on my YouTube channel called The Mystic and the Physicist. I love it, by the way. Oh, thank it's you. so fun. <laughs> We're going to do some more this fall. <laughs> and um, so the thing about... Um, about about physics is, you know, Einstein, let's go to Einstein. He's like the father of modern phys uh, uh, physics. Of course, the physicists out there, you're probably going to slap my hand. But <laughs> for the rest of us, we all know who Einstein is. And and he said when he was ten years old, he had a question: If I rode my bike the speed of light, would my flashlight on my bicycle automatically turn on? And this is what he studied his whole life, and it became the theory of relativity. So the, where mysticism and physics meet were really that the mystic and the physicist or scientist, true scientist, ask questions. Why? Why this? Why that? Mm -hmm. Why? Why this? Why that? And going on that path, what we have found today is that the mystics and the physicists have met. <laughs> you know, they've met. And the, where they've met is in the great unknown. <laughs> Meaning that the question right now today in, 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 uh, with um, quantum physics is, where does consciousness live? 
Fred Allen Wolf talks a lot about this, you, meaning you can't find a location. So I'm the mystic, and I say, well, ha, 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 ha. You physicist, well, it's obvious where consciousness lives. It lives in a place of no place because only in the third dimension do we have a, a place. But once you get out of the third dimension and you go into the other dimensions, place doesn't exist. What are the different dimensions? Well, there's many different dimensions. Um, I would have to say that it's a quantum field of dimensions, so I couldn't tell you how many. But I'm very aware... You know, of hundreds. But and like here, we're in one. We're in one. And you were talking about the third. What's the second? Well, the second, <laughs> it's interesting because the second dimension would be like here, this piece of paper. Okay. That's like, it, it's not matter space here. It's, but it's like, it's like, it's like a, a piece of paper and you've got one side and you've got the other side. That's the best way I can explain it where it's going to. You'll have a concept. The third dimension is the dimension of time and space. And then the fourth dimension is a dimension of the um, being able to be in the subtle frequencies of like psychic ability or intuition. Like when you're in intuition, you're in the fourth dimension. And we all have the ability to be intuitive. It, mm -hmm. It's a part of it. It's a gift. And when you're in intuition, you're in the fourth dimension. And then when you move into being able to uh, have communication, let's say, with angelic realms, you move into the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth dimensions. So someone like a Jesus or Yeshua, you know, he was able to access the twelfth dimension and beyond. You know, that's very rare to be able to to go there. Mm -hmm. But all of us, we were all created to be able to be in the third dimension, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, even the seventh. And that is about opening up the, the subtle, or I would like to say our subtle bodies, our subtle awarenesses. And the more they open, it's like you had that vision of, of Mary. You know, you went into the seventh dimension at that minute, at that mm -hmm. second. It just went pop it op popped open. You got to see yeah. it. We, we can't um, always hold it long, but the more you practice, the whole, more you can hold the, those gates open. And that's what I did. I just practiced for, you know, over 30 years. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to give away my, my age, <laughs> but um, I just practiced. I was like, oh, wow, I just saw a flash of, well, what if I, like, tried to stay there longer yeah or like when you yeah. you're in a dream right. and you want to go back into exactly. the dream it's kind of like that right exactly exactly yeah wow mm -hmm. so okay so mm -hmm. physics i thought would help explain mysticism a little well it does and then it doesn't because again at the end of the day the physicists are all scratching their heads and they go well we we don't know what we don't know. But one thing in physics they know today that little tiny particles called quarks can disappear and then reappear in other places and they don't know how that happens. Like how does that happen? They don't know. But or, that's because time isn't linear, so right. it could be exactly. jumping time zones. So it's and going through something, but they don't know what that thing is. That and, vortex and, of sorts. Right. And now, and I am not a physicist, so all you physicists out there, you <laughs> 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 just bear with me while I do the best I can. But um, but my husband made a movie about it, and, and is it, and so we have a lot of these conversations. But from the mystical point of view, I really under I can see where the physicists are going and I I I feel like I have answers like conscious you won't ever find where consciousness exists because it exists in a be it exists the core of it is somewhere other than this reality but it also includes this reality if that makes sense mhm mm so where does our subconscious our subconscious is within us right and then consciousness is outside of us? Well, no, consciousness is within us, too. We are all, con it's within and it's without. Okay, but subconscious is only within us. Subcon now, the subconscious mind is within your, uh, within your 
consciousness of, let's say, who you are, Maria. You have a subconscious mind that is that is made up of your experiences growing up. It's made up of uh, also your ancestry, your, your history of your ancestry. It's also informed by your DNA. It's an entire gr- cacophony of experience put together in your subconscious. And the thing about the subconscious is you're not separate like from my subconscious. So we also have a collective subconscious. Oh, wow. And that's what we're living in today. We're seeing these collective subconsciousness is kind of creating, materializing different uh, different ways or perceptions of seeing reality. Um, so we interact with each other. Our subconscious is always connected. We are connected on these fibers. And I've actually seen these fibers, which was pretty trippy. I thought, okay, I'm either losing my mind. Where's, <laughs> where's the psychiatric ward? But I've re- I've seen these these are kind of fibers and you'll meet somebody where your subconscious may be more connected to theirs and you can see this these connections of light is it because of similar experiences similar experiences um your soul group if you if you are from the same soul group similar experiences um and again a lot of it actually comes from our dna wow I didn't know that. So in trying to find your purpose, yes. how can mysticism help that? Well, mysticism is really the key if you are not clear about your purpose. Because we are each uh, born with a purpose. There's no one person. A soul purpose. A soul purpose. And the soul purpose is really the only purpose there is. Now, when I say this, what I Wait, mean is... Wait, are we talking about the soul, our inner soul? Our inner soul. Or are we talking about a soul, like one purpose? No, we're talking about... <laughs> Because I was like, oh, we have one purpose. And then I was like, oh, wait, this just transformed into soul's purpose. Like we have, well, we have a soul on our shoes. Which soul are we we talking about? (laughs) Yeah. Well, we're talking about the soul, the light within. So I just wanted to clarify what I meant by that. The soul is here to become actualized, to, to have a full experience of this reality and to have all of its light here and a full embodiment. But then the next level of that soul purpose is perhaps your path is to be an actress. Perhaps your purpose is to be a painter or a writer or you are a business person or, a or mom. not a mom or it, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is you feel within, wow, this brings me joy. It's not joyful every day. We all have challenges, but I know I'm on my purpose. And so the reason mysticism is the key, if you don't know if you're on your purpose, is by drilling down into this these journeys I talk about, going deep within ourselves, touching our soul, touching these these uh, these cathedrals of light, which are consciousness, which are wisdom, which are truth and understanding. We receive messages, and the messages are life-altering. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. And when that happens, I've just seen people just, wow. Because all of a sudden, all the energy comes up. The depression goes away. The anxiety goes away. Or the illness begins to heal. Because all those things are just symptoms to tell us um, you're, you're going down the wrong path here. But we don't know, how, well, how do I get on the right one? Yeah. But well, when you, society tells you you're supposed to be a certain thing or your family tells you you're supposed to be a certain thing. That's right. And you may have to go against all of that. Like, I'll take myself as an example. My father had a double PhD in physiology and biochemistry from the University of Chicago. My mother was a physiologist six weeks short of her PhD from the University of Chicago. My grandfather was a sociologist. My grandmother was, had a master's in English literature. And I grew up in academia. So here I am, this kid who's like, Mom, wow, I saw an angel. Well, no, angels don't exist. That's not my mom, my dad. They, they, and I go, but I saw it. Well, you, 
you're going to be a scientist. So my whole life, I'm going to grow up and be a scientist. I'm going to be a And then 17, my mom diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. The light came. She was healed. I'm like, what do I do, God? I can't go into science because they're all telling me I'm crazy and this is wrong, so I can't do that. I really had to go against everything I know. I have the chills. I mean, thank you. I had to stand completely alone because this was, I will... I'm kind of giving my age away, which I don't like to do. It's but, okay. You, know, you don't look it like, anyway. <laughs> no matter is, what it is, you look you. 20 years younger than it. Thank you. So this is like, you know, 40 years ago. Um, and I just kept praying. I tell you, it made me go deeper and deeper into my faith. Because I kept saying, God, you would not give me this for no re- for, for for nothing so i just have to go deeper and put my faith in you and not people because i really i felt like a complete alien and a complete outcast of course like weirder than weird and he was like well is she losing her mind is she meant and then i went through a period of wow am i losing my mind and then i'd be like no actually i'm I'm really sane. And <laughs> I would talk to psychiatrists and they'd be like, well, you're like the sanest person I know. So maybe you really are seeing angels. But, I mean, yeah, it was you doubt not yourself. Easy. You do doubt yourself. Mm-hmm. But I'm still here, gratefully. And now we're at a different time and I'm here with you. And it's it's just so exciting that we have this open conversation now yeah. that we can go here. It's It's more acceptable, more and more acceptable. So if someone's trying to find their purpose and and something has been, you know, I imagine you have something screaming at you inside right. your body, right? Is it the child in you that knew what you were supposed to be that you've now been told you're not supposed to be, whether it was your parents? Like, I remember when I was little, I wanted to be a marine biologist. And my mom was like, Maria, you just want to play with the dolphins. And I'm like, uh-huh. yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> or I wanted to be a veterinarian because I mm. loved animals. I like I, It was all animals. And then, mm. then it started to shift mm. into what everybody would say. Right. You're supposed to be right like there was a moment where I'm going to be a lawyer Mm -hmm. because that's what would make my parents proud um, and then I had this fascination with news so I was like Mm -hmm. oh I'm going to do what Joan London does I love her Mm -hmm. and so it's funny I I wonder for someone who hasn't found something that lights them up right and they're living in this I would say a purgatory of sorts yes because if you're not living your your truth or your purpose it's not a fun existence how do they decide whether what they're hearing is the right thing because now you're an adult yep you have bills Mm -hmm. you have responsibilities and you have a lot of people who are going to say you're crazy which you taught us and it's my favorite thing I think (laughs) I've learned on this podcast is you're not crazy you're wise (laughs) And I really have taught so many people oh, that since you've taught you. me it. Um, how do you how do you listen to it? How do you explore it? And also, like I said before, is it the little kid in us that really knows what we were supposed to do? Because if we're born with a purpose, the little kid in us should know that, right? To a degree, there must be some shape of it that we understand. Yes, absolutely. So the child in us does know what one's purpose is, what their purpose is. However, it may not be well defined. There are people who've said, well, since four, I was four, I knew I was going to be a great violinist. Um, and then there's people who are like, well, I knew I was supposed to do something. I didn't know what it was, but I loved to go swim with the dolphins or I loved animals. And then there's other people who, who go, well, uh, my whole life I felt I was supposed to do this. And then it turned out, well, I wow, I wasn't supposed to do it because I'm not really very good at it. So there's no one way. And the other thing about purpose is, depending on where we are in life, there is also the balance between what our purpose is and can be and our reality of the third dimension. So let's, let's for an example, um, I'll, I'll use myself. I was a dancer. I had this terrible knee injury, which short-circuited my career. Well, today it would not have. I could have had surgery for this. 
if I were to think, well, gosh, my um, purpose is I'm going to be uh, uh, on Dance with New York City Ballet now. Well, that's just, that's just not going to happen because of time and space and the reality of my age. But what I can do is, well, I can support someone else to do that. Mm-hmm. I can uh, put energy into to dance or ballet. And by the way, I am on the board of State Street Ballet, so that's exactly what I did. I said, well, I can put my energy into someone else who that's their dream. And because we're all connected, we're all one, I don't really have to live that purpose. I have just as much joy if you can live it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just to support you in living it. So that's one scenario. But there may be another scenario where later you're in your 40s and then you have an aha. Wow, I, I think that I'm, I'm not on the path that I'm supposed to be on. And you get more and more and more unsettled and you listen deeper and deeper and deeper and you go, wow, you know, I'm supposed to go back to school. I'm supposed to do that. You, you should do it. You can do it. I mean, you can change your life. Um, you just want to do it with wisdom. I can't tell you how many, especially, uh, this is going to sound awful, don't don't get mad, especially men at middle age will come to me and say, I, I know I'm supposed to do this different thing. And I would say, okay, that's great. Yes. Let's explore this and keep your job. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't quit. Yeah. And usually we got to the other side where they, could keep their career, keep their job, and all of a sudden, they, well, they were happy with it because they learned how to bring their purpose into what they were already doing. Mm, interesting. So that's another, so that's, you see, there's different ways. Funny, though, that the guys were interested in quitting because I feel like women would be the quicker ones to quit because we want to follow our passion and our right. purpose, right? Right. You would think, but that that's just my experience. And wow. My, spiritual counseling work over the years wow Mm -hmm. okay so you explore Mm -hmm. it you explore it that's right so maybe as a volunteer or like you said sponsoring someone else and see if it gives you enough joy where you feel like that's right exactly because you can once you we step out of ourself our kind of egocentric self one of the greatest joys there is is actually finding joy in someone else's ex- what they're excelling at mm-hmm. that you couldn't excel at like maybe you love soccer but you know you can be on a woman's soccer team but you could be just as happy and exuberant at those those women out there um you're still living your purpose because you're a part of it because we're all one mm-hmm. we're not separate we're all one well maybe that's why mm-hmm. i'm so fanatical with sports there right? you have it. <laughs> That's I, it feel, huh? I do feel like I'm on there when I uh-huh. when I talk about it. I'm like, we just need one more point or whatever, right. and they're like, we. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. I feel like I'm playing the game. You see me sweating? I'm sweating. <laughs> there you go. But this this is fabulous, Maria, because this is what I'm talking about. Because you are playing the game. Because your energy, yes, feeds them. Yes. Meaning, there's okay, no please, can we talk field. about this for a yeah, second? Your energy feeds them. They need your energy to win (laughs) okay I really believe that energy is so important in these games so for example the Patriots are down 20 to 3 we got a couple minutes left in the game it's never been heard of before and at one point I got sunken in and I was like oh wow I can't believe this happened and I got really sad. And then I was like, wait, no, no, we have to change the energy. We have yes. to change the juju. So I start texting all of my friends throughout the arena. Great. I'm like, we have to change the energy. They need us. They need yes. us. And oh, so, I have chills when you said that. I just got huge chills. Uh, yeah, I started putting out, like, believe. We got to believe. Mm-hmm. We got to believe. Because believe was mm-hmm. this big mantra for the team at right. the time. I'm like, if we're not going to believe now, when are we going to believe? That's it. And I started literally honing in on Tom Brady. <laughs> this is so crazy. I love we're talking about this right now. I would hone in on Tom Brady, our quarterback. And I would talk to him and I would literally envision like a line between us and I'm way up in the stands. And I was like, Tom, we're going to take this step by step, baby steps. You're going to get the snap. You're going to connect to a passer. 
to 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 okay. you know Edelman or somebody okay. on the team, and we're gonna go baby step by baby step. You got this. You're the greatest of all time. You can do this. And I literally did that. So we start winning, right? And I have to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. My husband's like, No, don't move. Keep doing what you're doing. And so there will be people who will say that I'm crazy. Right. Um, you're not crazy. You're wise. But I'm wise. <laughs> I really believe that. I can tap in. You can. I know I can. You totally can. And so yes. whether it's, you know, basketball or football, I I had the Celtics would ask me to come to the playoff games in 2008 because the I was like the sixth man on the court for them. They were like, you've got to be here. Yeah. You have to be here because I would scream and I would give all the energy out. Um, and it's funny. I had a conversation with Sugar Ray Leonard. Do you know Sugar Ray Leonard? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Had a conversation with him at a party. I think it was like a week ago. And I said, I have to ask you a question. I really feel like energy plays such a big part in what you do. And it's not just what you do. It's what any superior kind of athlete or performer does. Because if you, like Larry Bird, I said to him, I said, I watch Larry Bird's highlight clips because my husband's a big Mm -hmm. fan and he's made me a big fan over the years. And I'll watch what he does on the court. He's not the most skilled player in the world, technically. I mean, he's, you know almost like a whatever won't get too deep but he'll do things on the court and I I watch it and I'm like he didn't know that player was there he felt it it was energy that's right and I said I feel like the same thing has applied with you in your career where you feel the punch before it's coming like you know to shift because the energy is there you're so connected to the game like this is what I was saying to them Mm -hmm. They're so connected to the floor, they're connected to the players, they're connected to the energy that they just know and things just happen and they're, that's why they're amazing right. is because they're so connected. And he's like, how the hell do you know this? Wow. And I'm like, because I see it. It's so clear to me when I watch Larry or I'll watch a Sugar Ray or even in my experience when I was doing Dancing with the Stars, when I was connected, I remember looking at Kevin up in the, the stands and I said, I got this. And he was so scared. And I was so connected to this dance and this whole thing that I killed it. But And I felt like there was nothing that could get in my way. A hundred percent, I was going to crush it. And so whenever... I'm in a situation, I could be playing football. If I'm super connected, all of a sudden I look like a football god. Like I I do things that I don't even know I can do. That's fabulous. Because I'm connected. Absolutely. And that right now, that is mystical. Let me be real clear. That's everyday mysticism. You are a mystic. It's not just, oh, you go in a cave. It's It's on the football field. It's on the basketball court. It's in a hospital. It's on the street. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. When you are connected to something unexplainable and it's, you are aware of energy, that is the mystical world. That is it. You're there. And it can change reality. Mm-hmm. And it does. I'm totally there with you. I, I know what you can do. And we all do it. We all do it with each other, but we do it unconsciously so imagine if we could do this consciously yeah what we could create here on earth well it's think like the start is knowing right and thinking in your life where have i felt super connected where i was i did stuff that i didn't even know i could do that i was so amazing right like i can dance and i cannot dance i could be terrible like horrible have no rhythm in a moment and then be completely awesome over here right and it's all a matter of connection. If I'm connected or if I'm at a photo shoot and I'm not connected, Forget I have it. to think of the poses. I have to think of what right. I'm doing. When I'm connected, I'm flowing and I'm crushing it. So it's how do we figure out how to get into that space? And so, part of that is having good energy around you, right? That's yes. what I've learned is if yes. I have good people and good energy around me, I can get in my zone, which is what I think people call it, is getting in your zone. That's right. That's right? it. It's getting in the zone, and it has to do exactly with what you said. To get in the zone, you need to have the right environment. There, uh, You need to have people around you, and you also need to have an inner practice of how you get in the zone. Everyone's different. Uh, when I was a dancer, the same thing. There were times when I, ju- I did things that people said, you shouldn't be able to do that. Like yeah. I, one of the things I could do was jump in the air and then stay up there. 
like just kind of paws up in the air. And no one was like, how do you do that? And I said, well, it's really easy. There's a line up here at about this many feet, and I jump on top of it, and then I sit on it. Oh, my Lord. But you thought that. I thought that. It was energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's the power of your mind. That's how powerful our mind is. And that's how powerful thoughts are. Yeah. We talk about that on the show a lot. Very powerful. And that is also why great athletes, great dancers, people who excel train their mind. Mm -hmm. Those basketball players have phenomenal minds. Their mind is trained how to think. And thinking, when it's really trained, it it goes into a, 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 a beyond the normal range of thinking because it's it's a it's a deeper thinking that's more in insti- you can't put words to it. It's like when you're dancing or when you have or on a photo shoot where you're just in the zone. You're yeah. not thinking. No, but it's another kind of thought operating, and that's your genius thought. That's where you're in your genius, and we all have genius uh, within it. One of my dear good friends, um, Adam Hall, has a, a, a new. Uh, offering called the genius codes i just love what he does because he really like narrowed in you should have he's amazing narrowed in on our genius and but that's what that is when we are in that zone we're in our genius and genius our genius is our purpose right there that's it whatever you're doing that's what it is wow now if we could just Teach us all how to access it more often. Well, that's that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're here. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. And even for those of you listening, you just start to have this inner dialogue with yourself. Start to just spend some quiet time with nature. Start to look within and to uh, to, to pray, to, to ask for guidance. Doors will open because we all have a, a deep ability to go into our genius. Um, and then it's always good to have help. It's always good to have a guide yeah. or a teacher or a guide like you. Uh, we all need each other. Yeah, we're better together. We're better together. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> yeah, That's I also it. think it's like, I guess, you know, another practical tip that I would probably give somebody is, find those moments where you were just in your element and you were crushing and try to put yourself in those kind of moments so that you can feel that and then keep bottling that up and knowing, okay, what were the things that led to that? Who were the people that were around me? Because I also feel like if you have like great champions around you, people who are really like, who want more for you, who believe in you, that's when you can soar. So when I see someone performing or even on Instagram and they are just like they're flowing like everything they do is gold right Beyonce she's gold everything she does forget gold she's diamond right it's because she's in her flow she's in her energy she knows that she's she knows she's awesome yes yeah and when you know you're awesome the problem is with all of us I'm realizing (laughs) as I'm talking about is we (laughs) doubt so much and we have so much negative speak so if we can erase the negative speak and bring in some more positive speak and that's where the affirmations come in I think and that's the whole point of them is like start talking to yourself better start thinking of yourself higher because we all are better than what we think we are absolutely and just love yourself love yourself it's really I, I feel about the ability for us to love ourselves and to love ourselves no matter what and know that we're not perfect and we're here to learn <laughs> lessons and we're learning our lessons. But when you really get in touch with loving, you really fully love yourself, then you move into, oh, wow, I'm all love. And that that experience is the experience of I'm awesome. Yeah, when, that's where when, your radiance comes from. That's where your radiance comes from. When Beyonce's like, I know I'm awesome, she is in full love. She is in loving herself so deep that her full self is free to radiate to be in radiance to expound it's it's everything it's creativity and that's that's what we're here to do ultimately that's our purpose wow that's everybody's purpose what a great way to end the show that was great Wow. Yeah. So before I let you go, we always ask everybody, what are you currently doing 
to get better, to improve, to to live better. Is there something that you would share with us? Oh, absolutely. Well, the thing I'm doing right now, which I'm very excited about, is I just hired um, a new CEO for my company, uh, Tom Fresina, and he uh, was one of the founders of Fantasy Sports, you know, the video game, and he's an awesome businessman. And he's just, he's an he is excellent. Like he, he's he's a star, and the fact that he wants to work with me, right? The the mystic, the alternative person. Uh huh. I just I made that choice. I prayed for someone like him. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I need so, and he showed up, and it's exactly what I prayed for. That's so great. Like and so this just like happened like a week ago. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving myself the gift of really calling in uh, the people to support me and, and my work. And, and you know, I haven't always been good at that because I, I'm like, you know, a healer. Like, oh, you know, I take care of everybody. But then at the end of the day, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm fading because there's nobody's taking care of me. And I had to go within and kind of relook at my own self-love and yeah. change everything. So that I'm in the middle. I'm being just completely transparent with you. I love Maria. that. That's, That's amazing. That's Thank so you. Well, congrats. Thank you. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, one of my things that I say nightly, one of my like nightly prayers is I ask for, um, um, God to continue to flow uh, abundance into my life, but with good people yes, and good partners yes. and of course health and happiness mm -hmm. and success and all of those things too. But, um, once I started saying that more and more good people started coming Absolutely. and I'd be like, Whoa, I'd meet someone and they'd come into my life. And I'm like, Oh, thanks God. Cool. And then it mm -hmm. just kept happening. So mm -hmm. it does work when you ask yes. you receive. Yes. Deirdre, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. As always, this is such a great conversation. I love it. If you want to learn more about Deirdre Hayde and her work, her workshops, her books, you can go to DeirdreHayde.com. That will be in the summary of this episode. And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present.